Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to have you all in uh, this class. Hopefully, today is our last class. I'll try and wrap up uh, uh, all the chapters which are remaining in prayer and intercession. Um, and yeah, if you have any clarifications, doubts, everything you can clear today. Let's uh, pray and let's get started. I'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for your grace, your strength, Lord, um, and Father God, for just carrying us through this entire course. We believe that every word that is spoken, that God, it is implanted in our hearts. And God, that uh, by your word, Lord, that we will be able to see, uh, Father, your kingdom come in powerful ways in our lives. And Father, we pray uh, that... Uh, Lord, uh, each of us will have uh, the spirit of intercession, Lord, in our uh, lives. And God, that you will work powerfully through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, so let's now come to the chapter that talks about cities. Uh, in the last week's sessions, we completely looked at fasting, fasting and prayer. So today we look at... Uh, interceding as a group, we look at praying for others, especially for cities and regions. Okay, uh, we all come from some or the other place, and uh, we we know how our cities are. We know how our um, maybe our villages or our small towns are. What are the things that are going on there? And we carry a concern. We carry a burden for uh, our places and we want to see God's kingdom come there when we say kingdom of God should come everything that God is about everything that heaven has we want there like we want peace we want joy we want um, you know uh, all the pain to be removed all the confusion to be removed so every provision so all the good things which are in God all the good things which are in heaven we want it on earth and that's what we are saying when we say, God, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come in my city. Let your kingdom come in my village. Okay, uh, uh, so on. So today, let's focus on uh, chapter 17 that talks about how we should pray for cities. How we should pray for um, regions. Regions means many cities put together, an entire area. That is a region. And nations, we already know that there are several nations in the world. So how do we pray for the nations? First of all, we must understand that God is interested in communities. God is interested in groups of people. Okay, There are many scriptures where you read about the names of cities like Jerusalem, Sodom, Gomorrah, um, Nineveh. Okay, so you, we read about all these places because when God sees the people, he sees them as individuals, uh, but he sees them as cities also. Okay, so how does, what is God's perspective or understanding about a city and how does he want a city to be? So we must first understand that only then we will be able to pray correctly for cities. We notice that God has a heart for the cities. So when Jesus saw Jerusalem, you know, he cries out, right? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, right? Like you, uh, he has a, he has this passion and this love for the city that Jerusalem would be a joy uh, among the nations. So that is what God wants for Jerusalem. So when we look at uh, Nineveh, Jonah, God sends him and says, you go preach to those people. They were very wicked people. They were lost in their sins. But obviously, it's because God loves them. He sends uh, Jonah and says, okay, you go. You share about, um, you know, my love. If they, if they change, good for them. And did they change? Did the people of Nineveh change? Yes, they changed, right? And uh, Jonah was so surprised. He thought God is going to destroy them. But they changed, and so God changed his mind and said, okay, we will not destroy these people. But God sent a messenger to that place because he loved those people. So in this way, 
right we we see how god really um, loves people and communities he wants everyone to change what about sodom and gomorrah do you think god hated them god loved them sinful people right A sexual immorality was widespread in sodom and gomorrah so god said okay i'm so angry i want to destroy was that god's only intention destroy yeah if if at all they changed right uh, the way god blessed ninava the way he uh, went back on his decision right he would have actually gone back on his decision so when you look at god telling abraham why did god even tell abraham think about it because remember we are saying that god is looking for an intercessor somebody to pray somebody to intercede on behalf of the people so maybe that is what god's expectation was that abraham he he will intercede and he interceded in genesis 18 but unfortunately there was no righteous person in that place and so it had to be destroyed so god loves people he loves communities he wants them to change he wants an intercessor and when intercessors engage when people repent uh, destruction and judgment will not come upon these places that is god's heart but we also notice that you know people are in so much sin that uh, there's no other option destruction comes judgment comes but that's not god's primary will that people will be destroyed okay so this is how god looks at people communities and he wants them to change so for them to change uh, like he approached abraham like he approached jonah okay like he approached many other people he wants us to stand in the gap and pray for them so jeremiah 29 and verse 7 can somebody read that passage please jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 7 What does it say? Jeremiah twenty nine verse seven. Yeah. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. Mm. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Okay. So God is speaking to His people, and what does He say? Just go on. Go back to the passage. what but, is he telling them but seek the welfare of the city yeah seek the welfare of the city meaning let the city be blessed let the city do well that is the welfare of the city what are some things that uh, make the city um good how how would you like your city to be tell me couple of things peace genuine people genuine genuine people yes. okay yes Gen unity what else what would you like in your cities good leaders good infrastructure right uh, facilities education medical help um, these are all like practical things we look for but spiritual things city to be saved right city to know god love god worship god um the people to walk in the fear of god okay uh, now if you look at um the way things are in cities we don't find many of these things they are lacking and even worse situations are there there's no justice people are fighting you know there's violence there's crimes right crimes against the most vulnerable people elderly women children it's quite scary okay so god is telling the people you pray for the city pray for the peace of the city or pray for the welfare of the city now uh, nelson could you just read it one more time but seek the welfare of the city mm. where i have sent you into exile yes and pray to the lord on its behalf mm. for in its welfare you will find your welfare 
okay thank you so also notice the people are being asked to pray for the city which is not even their city at that point they were in exile you got it so they were in a different city but god is saying because you are here in this city i want you to pray if the city does well you will do well if there is peace in the city there will be peace in your lives and that's what god is telling the people so the question sometimes people ask the question uh, this is not my city my city is somewhere else should i pray for that city should i pray for this city you can pray for both cities okay so when the city does well it is in peace it will bring life to us as well so that is the call that god gives his people pray for the city pray for the welfare of the city in its peace you will have peace okay so we need to rise up and pray uh, god promises that when we as his people we pray god will bless our land just now we we looked at so many things which are not wrong which are not correct and we looked at all the things that we want in the city how to get the blessings of god we need uh, to repent we need to go before god seeking his blessings uh, so could someone read from second chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 yes if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land okay so uh, it shows that when god's people get together right uh, what are uh, some things that are listed out nelson please read again if my people who are called by my name humble themselves okay humble themselves and pray and pray and seek my face okay seek my face and turn from the their wicked ways okay turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven hmm. and will forgive their sin and heal their land okay great so we see that god is calling his people to position themselves in repentance humble themselves and pray seek my face it means that we are positioning ourselves in humility and in repentance before god on behalf of the people now uh, some of us may ask the question we'll go to that later why should i repent you know i am a righteous person i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus why should i repent for the city the city may be evil the people may be evil but why as god's people we need to pray we need to seek god and repent on behalf of the city there is something known as identification okay identification simply means we didn't make that mistake but because we are part of that family right uh, we have a concern and we are praying on behalf of that family or on behalf of that community on behalf of the city and that is why on behalf of the city when we come to god and we say god we are sorry for you know uh, not um, walking in the fear of god we are sorry for um, our sinful ways we are sorry for cheating we are sorry for all the things that are going on in the city right uh, for uh, what other evil can you say you know we said crimes injustice uh, so many things uh, mishandling money so different things that are going on we are sorry for that we are we may not have done it but the church has a powerful place to uh, sort of identify with what is going on in the city and come to god for repentance did you understand what i'm trying to say it's not that we personally did that mistake it's not like that but we represent our city we represent our community and we represent our people and that is why you know god is saying if my people who are called by my name if they would humble themselves and pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways so uh, we know in the armor of god the the belt of truth 
right and the bless breastplate of righteousness we are supposed to hold that as believers we are supposed to walk in the truth and walk in righteousness then our walk is very powerful you got it so in the same way when we are coming to god and we are repenting on behalf of the city even our life should be righteous before god then our prayer becomes so powerful and god says i will heal your land in other words you know blessing will come things will change things will transform in our land and for that we need to go and pray because god is saying you need to pray for the peace of your city most of the time what do we do as believers instead of praying what do we do any idea what believers tend to do instead of praying for the city haven't i mean i don't know if you've done it but i have like we complain you know we we say oh what is this what is this government you know what is this city what is this infrastructure we complain we point fingers okay and we take that position i understand sometimes it's frustrating but as a believer god is saying i'm giving you the authority why don't you pray you pray for your city pray for peace pray for prosperity i will heal your land okay so um instead of being a complaining believer we can be a praying believer and that will bring the difference that will change there are many other passages where we can see that god calls us to pray for authorities right so like romans 13 we are supposed to pray for the authorities whom god has uh, placed above us so we as god's people have a responsibility to pray for you know kings governors people who are ruling the land we are supposed to pray for the uh, the land itself for peace and justice and prosperity so when we take that position our land will be blessed and it is god ultimately that who is involved in the rise and fall of the nations you know sometimes we only do the predictions the economy how does it look it you know is this nation better than the other nation who is overtaking which country so we do all our uh, rational analysis which is fine but ultimately it's the blessing of the lord it's the blessing of the lord upon a nation that will cause it to rise up okay and it's the principles of god in that land as people live by the principles of god's word you know they 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 there will be a blessing on the land these are the things that god is calling us to look into so um god is involved in the rise and fall of nations acts chapter 17 and verse 26 is a reference we don't have to read it but i've just um, stated it in a simple way so i think we are all getting the picture that we want we need to pray for people and uh, when we look at each uh, city we can sort of analyze what a city looks like every city is so different like if you look at bangalore you have um, you know the the um, city is growing so fast you have um, maybe a lot of young people living here a lot of young people coming in for jobs people from all around the country maybe you have you know people from across the world as well um, and uh, what are their professions like we can chalk that out and we can say hey a lot of people in the it uh, a lot of people in whatever you know management uh, other things so we can look at the demographics we usually say demographics so you can uh, study and research and find out what kind of people live in the city what's going on in the city right similarly you can you can uh, study any city and data a lot of data is available okay so that way we'll know even when we are doing ministry when we re, when we study about church planting uh, you know we'll come to that in your uh, next year and the year after church planting so what are some things that we should learn about the city and uh, first thing is to learn the demographics and what's going on in the city so that we'll be able to pray that is the 
first step. So we understand in this way. And then we can start praying. You know, we can, uh, depending on what the Lord plants in our hearts, we'll pray in general. But uh, if we are, let's say, you know, my church is located in a particular area and there are a lot of IT parks around, we can pray for the IT people, their families, right? their, their um, uh, children, everything, how they're going about their lives. Or maybe where we are planted, if there are a lot of colleges, young students, they come, hundreds and thousands of students come, they study. We can pray for the students and we can say, God, you know, bless the students, let them know you, help us to be an instrument to share your love. So in this way, we can pray for the different people who live in the city. Okay, who live in uh, the village or wherever we are from. And we can uh, get together and start blessing them. So these are ways in which we can ask for God's presence to come, for uh, God's kingdom to come, and also for cities to experience revival. Okay? Uh, so there is a publication by the name Revivals, Visitations and Moves of God, APC publication. You, can, you will be able to download it from apcw.org forward slash books. Go there and you can download. It's there in Hindi. It's there in English. You can download whichever version you want. And there are a lot of stories. You can read about stories of revival that broke out in various parts of the world. Uh, you would see that, you know, the first great awakening, the second great awakening. Um, and then you, you read about, um, you know, portions or play, uh, certain uh, regions where revival broke out because of praying communities. There were communities that prayed uh, and asked God, Lord, pour out a revival, one of which is uh, in Wales, Evan Roberts. I've shared about that, right? Uh, who he started to pray. And uh, there were other young people with him who also started to pray. And slowly, the prayer movement became so big that the entire city started to pray. Okay, And uh, then uh, came about the Welsh revival and the many uh, spiritual results of the Welsh revival and the social or transformational um, aspects of the Welsh revival. We can read about it. Just one example I'm giving us. Uh, but in this way, we notice that when we pray for cities, when we pray for regions, it can impact an entire, uh, you know, like entire city. Things can be so transformed. Okay. So there are many things we can read about it, like in uh, terms of social transformation, it is said then, uh, that when the Welsh revival happened, um, the crime level came down in Wales and uh, the police did not have any work to do. Can you imagine in a city like there's nothing, no crimes, nobody to catch and put in the prisons. So the police didn't have any work. So they became crowd managers. All these huge meetings that used to take place in the evenings the police were deputed to go there and manage the crowd. Okay, These are real things that have happened in history when people prayed for their cities. You got it. So I'm just helping us understand that there will be, um, you know, spiritual transformation. There will be social transformation. Some of it can be immediate. Some of it can take time. Okay, we should not get discouraged. I know there are many people, they may be praying for the city for so many years. Some churches are praying for India for so many years, right? Many people are praying. But then we ask, what? where is the result? You know, where is the change? It will come. Just be faithful. God will um, you know, make it happen. So we need to pray for revival. And when people have prayed for revival, things have happened in history. So that would be a very good book for us to go read and understand how God has impacted places. So um, all of this is the positive part. Now, unfortunately, when um, cities have a lot of evil or cities have, uh, let's say, um, uh, sin, and they are unrepentant before God, cities also end up um, getting judgment. And we see that in the Old Testament, right? God's judgment came upon uh, people. Why? 
because they did not heed god's voice they did not repent before god so that is also possible if there is no prayer if there is no change of heart then what happens judgment right uh, so we need to be aware of um, this matter as well uh, there are certain cities which when we look at in the bible we see that they became strongholds of um, uh, you know demonic presence demonic activity so places like um, uh, tyre okay t y t y r e tyre or oh, not too sure how you pronounce that but yes we we find that that is a place that is um, stated as um, having you know uh, i mean um, god's instead of god's presence his reign and rule there was a lot of evil uh, in that particular place persia persia is another place like um, there are references to these place we're not getting into the details of it but you can always go back and research ephesus ephesus where uh, paul went for ministry when he went there he noticed that there was um, um, you know worship of uh, the goddess dina and uh, people a lot of people were engaged in black magic in that place right that is the place where he went and did ministry when he did ministry there and miracles started happening even those who were engaged in sorcery and uh, the occult they they turned towards god so you can imagine what kind of ministry paul might have done there for all these people to come and they they started burning all their equipment or um, tools that they used for black magic so there was a real transformation in that city but originally that city was the place where um, you know worship to a goddess uh, happened and a lot of sorcery was practiced uh, in revelation you read about a place called pergamos which is um, uh, when john writes he writes you know like satan is there in in pergamos he's he's occupied that place okay so cities can also become demonic strongholds that also is possible that satan can work through that city it is so much under his control now as believers we don't want our city to be under the control of demons or satan okay are you all understanding or is too heavy or going above your head you know can understand okay great now please feel free you can always stop and ask if there are any questions so yeah satan can um, control cities which is also a reality so knowing all these things um, what we are saying is as believers let's pray right let's pray for the city we just go back to all those scriptures that we uh, saw in um, um intercession when we read about intercession what did we say god is looking for one man to stand in the gap right ezekiel 22 verses 29 to 31 even one person prays it will affect the the city it will affect the nation so don't ever think oh um you know what what will be the result if only i pray it's okay let's start one person can begin okay and uh, we have seen in history that usually prayer movement started as god gave the burden to one person and slowly it's like the fire right how do you how do you um, light a big fire it starts with a spark and then it catches on it catches on so the burden that god puts on our hearts when we start slowly god will give that burden to everyone everyone kind of begin to um, you know experience that spirit of grace and supplication holy spirit is that spirit of intercession he enables us then we can pray we can intercede we can see god and we can see the transformation so one man stand in the gap and god will bless us uh, Psalm two and verse eight. It is a psalm um, in which to Jesus, you know, God is saying, "Ask of me, and I will give you the nations." 
uh, for your inheritance. And uh, could you just read that uh, passage? Psalms Psalm 2, yeah. verse 8. Yeah. Ask me, and I will make the nations your heritage. Yeah, heritage. And the ends of the earth your, your possession. possession. Yes. So this is a promise that God is giving. We can claim this too as believers and say, God, why, why can we claim this? Because it's about it's um, in the Great Commission. Right? We need to impact nations and cities. So we can ask God, God, you said in your word, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. So we are not asking for um, worldly reasons that, oh God, you know, give me this nation, give me inheritance. We are asking for spiritual reasons and God is very happy with that. This is a spiritual statement that we are, you know, primarily making here. And we are saying, God, we are asking for the nations. Okay. Uh, uh, and this is something that we can, um, we can pray as the Lord gives us the burden for it. Okay. Ask for the nations because go into the, what did Jesus say? Go to the ends of the earth. Got it? Go to the ends. When I had first come to APC, like like right at the start, and uh, I noticed the name. Back then also it was All People's Church and World Outreach. Okay, I was so shocked. I said, what is this? All People's Church, I can understand. What is this World Outreach? This is like many years ago. Uh, and at that point, uh, when I saw like a small community of people, I was wondering... Uh, why is it world outreach? You know, it doesn't look like world outreach right now. But as I'm seeing the journey, right, uh, the vision is very important. So it began as, even in the beginning, the vision is world outreach. That's what God has given. If you look at the Great Commission, it's, God says you go, go to the ends of the earth. So actually nothing is too big for God impacting nations is not too big for God. So when we look at the scripture like this, where God says, ask of me, I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. So this is all spiritual, um, uh, you know, like sp spiritually we are impacting. So we can sit here today and we can pray and say, God, through us, let the gospel go to all nations of Asia, let it go to all nations of, uh, you know, the American continent, let it go to um, the African continent. It's not actually a big prayer. God can do it. And God is saying, I want you to pray. Ask, you know, it, it needs that courage. Sometimes we are so scared even to ask for our own place because it looks um, daunting or overwhelming to see how can we make an impact on this particular area? That itself uh, may be too much for us. But God is saying, big vision, big dream, right? In prayer, to start with in prayer, pray, ask of me and the nations. It's in God's hands and he will give it to us. Okay. So this is the way we can pray. We can pray um, even for the nations. We can uh, declare the word that Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, 10. What did he say? He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we can say that, God, let your kingdom come in my city the way it is in heaven. Lord, let your kingdom come in my nation. You got it? So we can pray like this. We can pray for every nation. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, make it aligned to your rule and reign. The way Jesus would rule and reign the city. That's how we want it. So we as God's people, we need to ask God for that. And uh, we can also use our authority. We'll come to it. Uh, authority, you remember we said, um, uh, God, uh, Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we can exercise our authority, binding and losing. Okay, binding and losing. So we can pray in, these, in, in this way. So now that we have understood 
God has a purpose for every city. God has a plan for every city. And we need to pray that let God's plan be fulfilled. Uh, we see that Satan sometimes tries to take over cities and we have to break his hold over the cities. So pray against the demonic works. Pray against Satan's plans. You see, when God has a plan, Satan also has a plan. But as believers, we know how to cooperate with God's plan so that we can destroy Satan's plans. So how do we cooperate with God's plans? How do we cooperate with God's plans and destroy Satan's plans? Okay, pray. We pray in line with God's plans. Okay, then what else can we do? Uh, we, sorry, could you come again? Using authority. Yeah, so using authority. Good. So we can use authority. We can destroy Satan's plans. Then, only by prayer or anything more? Obedience. Obedience is needed, isn't it? To walk in righteousness. When we walk in righteousness, then we are aligning ourselves to God's plans. How about renewed mind when we are in the word and our thinking is getting transformed, our pattern is getting transformed, then we will be able to evaluate whatever is good, acceptable, the perfect will of God. Okay, so renewed mind. These are all ways in which we keep aligning ourselves to God's plan and we destroy Satan's plan. So in this way, we need to pray for the uh, city also and say, God, not the plans of Satan, but let the plans of God be uh, fulfilled in our city. Now, whenever God sees sins in a city, do you think it bothers him? Do you think he's affected by the sins of the people in the city? Does it matter to God? Or a community? Does God notice things in a community? He does, right? You see how the Egyptians, when they were um, mistreating the, the Jewish people um, in Egypt, okay, uh, when they were in slavery, what did God say when he sent Moses? The cries of the people have come to me. So God picked a deliverer and said, you've got to go do something because he's listening, he's observing, he's noticing. So what is going on in a community, in a region? God notices. Think about Sodom and Gomorrah. The evil increased. And God said, enough is enough. I'm going to destroy these people. They don't have any fear of God. God is noticing everything. It's not like sometimes we feel that, why is it getting delayed? Uh, how come these the evil people are doing their evil work um, and nothing seems to be happening? It's not like God doesn't know or God doesn't notice. He is noticing. So that is why we said earlier, when we seek God, when we humble ourselves, healing will come, blessing will come. But if we don't repent, warnings and judgment, we would move in that direction. So it's really us. We have to choose which way. But here's the point. God observes, especially the sins of the city. They are noticed. Okay, And if we don't repent, then uh, there are consequences. Sodom and Gomorrah, punishment, it came. Nineveh, God noticed. He said, look, I am going to destroy them. But let's give them a warning. Jonah, you go. Okay, And you go and preach to them. Tell them what is coming up. But thank God they repented. So especially when it comes to sins of the city, God notices. Okay? And uh, he's taking account of everything. And we don't want our city to, uh, to kind of, you know, be that city uh, where nobody, nobody is praying or nobody is repenting on behalf of the city because that's quite dangerous. Okay? So God does take notice of the sins of the city. And we as God's people, um, we've been saying, you know, what do we say every Sunday? What is that vision? 
Our vision is to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, okay, to the uh, to the nation and the nations, and a voice. We say salt, light, a voice. What do these things mean? They mean influence. Influence. Where there is light, darkness has to run away. So we are saying we are the light. As long as we are here, darkness will not prevail. Okay? We are the salt. What does salt do? When we put salt, it yes, it gives good flavor, but at the same time, it preserves. Okay? When we put salt, okay, all the chefs are looking at me. Uh, so when you put some salt, the food items don't get spoiled. So in the same way, when God says we are the salt, it means that we give a righteous flavor in the city. And secondly, uh, all the evil and the sin that destroy the city, we are actually protecting and preserving from decay and destruction. So we are light, we are salt, and we are voice. What is a voice? You know, like John the Baptist, repent and be baptized. We are here, we are telling them, look, Jesus has come. He has given the salvation. Turn to God. There's still time. You need to turn to God. God loves you. All of that. We are a voice to the people. And as God's people and as the church, you see every uh, uh, city, this is, this is also something for us to understand. God would notice the church of the city. Now, if you go to the book of Revelation, you see the seven churches. Right? So uh, let's say the church of um, Ephesus, the church of Laodicea, right? So, uh, so you have different churches like that, Smyrna. So what is God saying? He's saying that it's not like in a city of Ephesus, there would have been many churches, but God sees the overall body of Christ over that city, you know, and whether they are they are in line with God's purposes. So there is like a collective responsibility of all believers in the city. You may be from, uh, you know, the church of peace. I may be from the church of grace. Somebody else may be from the, you know, church of joy. Great. But if you're all in the same city, God looks, as, looks at all of us and he calls us as the church of, you know, the city of Bangalore or the city of uh, uh, Delhi, or whichever place. So there is a collective responsibility for us to take our position. What is the position of the church? Is there any position to protect the, the city? We've, we've seen this uh, when we studied intercession. How do we as believers and our prayers act for a city? Isaiah 62 Watchman, very good. Yeah, watchman. So as believers and the church in a city, we are like watchmen. Remember? Do you remember? We discussed, right? We said we can stop the evil and we can open the doors for good things and blessings. So that's how we must take our position like a gatekeeper and protector of the city. So in a, in a city... Uh, depending on how strong the church is, the city will be blessed. But if we are all fighting among ourselves and if we, you know, we are all having our own agenda, uh, everyone is saying, you know, one is saying this, one is saying that, when the church is weak and the church is not in agreement, for the devil it's very nice because watchmen is not doing their job. But as a citywide church, all of us together, we are praying together for the city. It is so powerful. So uh, I just want to uh, touch on a few things and you know, then we'll close and take up in the next class. Um, see, even here, we have sometimes um, uh, some pastors meetings and pastors gatherings. So I've seen like, you know, pastors coming together uh, all in one accord, praying for the city. And the last election that happened also, we had some such meetings where the pastors of the city came together, okay, different churches, and everyone was praying together and saying, God, you know, we want good leaders, we want your blessing, we want all the evil to be overcome. Can you imagine how, how powerful that can be?
so we need we need to develop that um, uh, kingdom thinking in your second year there is a course it's called kingdom builders kingdom means god's kingdom so it's an understanding where uh, it's not just about you know my church your church different churches we have to become better than the other it's not like that we are all part of the kingdom and so the kingdom of god in my city has to thrive okay so that is a uh, very very powerful when men of god women of god leaders they're of one accord in their hearts and we work together we pray together we bless the city we act like that good watchman evil cannot come to our city so these are the responsibilities of the body of christ uh, in a given city okay so let's stop here if there are any questions we can take it up uh, otherwise we will come back and we will uh, you know get into more in the next session it's the wages of sin is death okay <laughs> you can now go so we'll take a break and then we'll come back in the next session thank you